EOS integration kit version 4 released last week. So let's go and quickly set it up. So the first thing that we need to do is verify the plugin is enabled. So I'm using the marketplace version of the plugin. So I will just quickly enable it. And if you have already enabled it, the only method, uh, the two methods to verify is you can go to plugins and check that, or you should see under game EOS integration kit settings. And there is a new toolbar menu, which you will see on the main menu also. So you should see that also. I am assuming you do not have an organization yet. So let's start from very basic. We will be creating a new organization. So I would be naming it maybe beta aid YouTube or something like that. So organization you can say is your studio. So you should be naming it as a, your studio name. And basically organization would be a group of people and group of products and products are games. So let's create a new product and we will also see about the users part in the later part of the video or maybe in the second part where we add more players, uh, add more players for access to the game. So I'm creating a new product, which is a new game and name just named it EIK version 4 tutorial for the sake of it. And it's ready. Now let's go to the product settings of this EIK version 4 tutorial. So you can open it, go to product settings and you will notice all the SDK credentials that we need for our project settings. But some are missing, which is this clients. So let's go and you see it requires some additional agreements, which you can all agree to like, uh, what will you do if you disagree? So you will have to agree. Until then, I will just explain something very basic. That is what is, what is this client. So till the time I agree to these other configurations. So basically these clients are set of rules for your players to follow. Now you can create different type of client policies and each policy will have its own client assigned to it. Now these clients are basically you have an ID which the game will be using. So different builds of the game can be using different IDs and that can be changed at runtime too. But basically for each client, a different policy would be there and each policy would have different sets of rules. So let's create a new client policy where we will allow the player to have all the peer to peer required uh, policies like rules. So peer to peer. Um, so basically, as you can see, it says uh, you can host match and things like that. And there is a game client and game client with unlock. And you can even make a custom one. So most probably you will have to make a custom one later on in whenever something um, very large happens or you want to do something custom. But as of now, peer to peer works for the sake of this video and that's what I'm going to use. But uh, basically these client policies are just basic set of rules of what you want to allow and what you don't want to allow. And then you create a new client, which will give you a client ID and client secret, as you can see here. Now you will see these are the ones that we created. And now it says application is not yet created. So under Epic account services. So at this moment, I would just like to tell you if uh, you do not want to use Epic account services, basically you do not want to use a portal coming up for the users to log in, or you don't want to use the overlay or presence or these things, you can ignore this because this is only required for the players that are going to use Epic account services. So if you're not going to use Epic account services, you, if you don't know what that is, uh, you can check the documentation. It covers that. But basically Epic has two things. One, you can use their Epic account services where an overlay will come up and you can use their purchases if you are launching through the Epic launcher or else, for instance, you are launching from a, you are launching a mobile game. You can uh, maybe log in using their account portal and have 100 different login options or you can use a connect interface. Now this connect interface is basically your EOS account will not be linked to an Epic account. It will be an account of its own and you will have a product ID. Now you can access most of the features like you can do the multiplayer, player ticketing, title storage, player storage, all of those things. The only thing that you are not able to do is friends, which is, which is of course not available on Android as of now. And you won't be able to do things like presence and presence and what on, I think that's the two things and you will not have an overlay, which of course on Android, you won't have any, uh, in any, in any of the scenarios, at least for now. So it's completely dependent upon you. Now let's get back to the video and set this up. So let's go to permissions and see there are different types of permissions that you can take from an Epic user. 
now because it's an epic account you have to configure what type of uh, permissions you can take and also get it approved from the epic team so basically as by default you get these three that is the basic profile then the friends list and then the presence you can modify it in the plugin also and you can see you can enable the country permission and it enable it in here also but for now we only need these three basic permissions so we can do most of the stuff most probably you will never need the country one so we will set the rest of them to required so when the dev portal opens up for login you can just enable it and then link your client now this client is the client that the player is going to use we as we talked in the start of the video now you will see we have all the credentials so that looks good now we need to fill this in the artifacts section so artifacts basically are these client settings and you can add multiple clients so all the clients uh, will go here with all the settings because they can be different so let's name the default artifact like the first artifact the default artifact so we have the same value for all and paste the values so now e either you can go side by side and paste the values here so so like artifacts can be different for voice and stuff like that so let's press on use credentials in header file i usually use it uh, so basically it gives you in a text file and i copy paste it on a sidewise so let's do that so let me open up a text prompt okay so i pasted the values here you can copy it from the website again i just do it because it's easier for me now i will copy the product id and in the next version you will not be able to like you will be able to just paste this complete text and it will take the values automatically but for now it's not available so i will copy all the values application id goes in application which is oh it's not required sorry sandbox id goes in the sandbox id field then the deployment id goes in the deployment id section client credentials go in the client credentials which is the id that is the first value in the field then the secret oh sorry it should be the complete thing goes in the secret and that is it so let's close this don't save and it's completely as per the website values also you can directly copy it now let's copy the url that the page currently has so you can do it just from anywhere and copy the organization name which is the first part of the url so it's usually after the country so i will just copy it this is the organization name you can even copy it from the organization page and then the product name is after the products whatever the name it is given and just select automatically set up eik now what this will do is basically set your uh, settings to use eik net drivers which is very important and which for multiplayer of course and also set eik as the default now if you don't want to do it you can check the documentation for other methods to set it up manually but now when we have done it let's scroll up so you see it says uh, let's go to the top after it mounts the plugin you will see it starts setting up the subsystems so here after the mounting finishes you see it says loaded subsystem for type null so basically we have uh, this is a new project so it says we are not using any subsystem and so it's using the null online subsystem and it should be using eik when we have set it up so let's restart the engine now the engine is restarted let's go to the output log and you can see some good news we have some eos sdk logs but if you re scroll to the top here now we do not get a null message but we get that it's initializing eos and it was successful in doing it if you look a little down it says loaded subsystem for type eik which means it was a success so that is it for this video meet you in the next one it's a pretty long series so i have to record a lot of videos so bye